Techbusters proudly brought to you by Ericsson. Good evening and welcome to Techbusters, the best place to learn and hear everything about technology. With me in studio is the imitable Aki Anastasio, whose photographs from the 702 helicopter of Schwane on Fire are like world-class press photographers. Oh, thank you very much. I mean, I was at the right place at the right time with the angle. But you know what the astonishing thing is? You know, everyone, you know, it's amazing how a photograph can, can just spread so quickly on social media um, and just amplify a situation that makes it look even more extreme than what it actually is. Because literally where we were flying, you know, you flew five minutes south from where I took that photograph and life was as per normal for many people, you know. But at that epicenter where the photograph was, I, I it was I think you're being dark. tremendously humble. Firstly, no. that's a really great photograph. Well, thank you. And thank secondly, you. things really were on fire. But it was tense. It was tense, and uh, and people were, you know, were over exaggerating the the country. I think, you know, we do have our issues. But you know, if you look at some of the stuff that's happened in the U.S., for example, you look at Paris. You look at, you know, these kind of protests happen all over the world. But anyway, enough about me. I'm more interested in your trip. You were in Botswana, and what a fabulous trip! Because the innovation that you see and what you saw and what you've been telling me about that really excites me. It really is indeed. Firstly, it was uh, organised by the African Innovation. Innovation Foundation, a, a remarkable uh, body that does uh, as much support for innovators as it can. And one of the things that it has is a prize called mm. the Innovation Prize for Africa. Very, very interesting thing. Exactly. And uh, yeah, joining the conversation on the show, uh, our Twitter handle is at TechBustersSA, and uh, you can also tweet us. He's at Shapshack. I'm at Aki Anastasiu. But before we do anything, I'm really excited to hear about Toby's stuff. Here's what's coming up on the show tonight. Tonight on TechBusters, we chat to Tumi Shamayu, VP and Head of Strategy, Marketing and Communications at Ericsson. And Aki pops into the iStore in Santon to chat about Apple's marketing journey. It's Tech Chat all the time tonight on TechBusters. Joining us in the studio tonight is Tumi Chamayu, who is the Vice President for Strategy and Marketing at Ericsson. Um, and, and they're doing the most amazing research uh, on what's happening in the world of technology. Because as we know, technology has been evolving at such a rapid pace. It's so difficult to predict the future. Is it a fair comment to say that the next three years are not going to be recognizable? When you look at the smartphone adoption, I think we're sitting in around 200 million smartphones adoption at the, con the continent at the moment, 1.1 billion people. Ericsson's saying that this is going to go to well over 600 million in the next few years. Absolutely. I mean, one of the main things that is driving this uptake is just the cost of the devices. The device prices are coming down. Mm. Uh, tariffs and legislation is on the side of the consumers. So we see that as these prices come down, more and more people will adopt uh, the smart devices. And it's also important because it's also pushing, I think, some of the agendas that we desperately need in Africa, such as um, the Sustainable Development Goals. So I'm glad to see that you're holding yes. that report. Well, we, we, we've got hold of this amazing report. It's out online at the moment. It's the Earth Institute Columbia University uh, report that was done together with Jeffrey Sachs and Ericsson. And this report is available online, but I understand this is going to be unpacked at the um, uh, Africa Union meeting coming up, right? Absolutely. Um, so we launched this during a World Economic Forum in Rwanda. However, it is such an important piece of research that we have done that it is important for us to unpack it to various stakeholders. Yeah, yeah. Um, it indicates really the impact of ICT in the agenda of Sustainable Development Goals. We all know that um, the Sustainable Development Goals were launched in 2015 in September in New York. And one of the key imperatives is that we need to make a, a huge impact or a huge um, acceleration in terms of how do we address the 17 goals that have been set. And this research indicates that ICT is front and center in terms of how they accelerate uh, the progress of these goals. We cannot uh, afford to do business as usual. Yes. It is important that ICT becomes core and center in terms of any policy or any engagements wow. that government is doing. The impact of ICT on GDP mm. uh, is, is monumental. Yeah. 
um, it's not only in terms of just creating jobs or facilitating industry and creating jobs, but it also helps industry to transform itself. And in transforming itself, it also ensures that um, we produce much better products, we can be net exporters, um, that we can also um, increase our skills level. So the, virtu the virtuous um, cycle is actually quite monumental. To me, the, the, the interesting um, report that you sent out a few weeks ago um, that Ericsson conducted about wearable devices, yeah. you know, we were talking about earlier in the studio and she said, how many chips do you have embedded in you and how many connected <laughs> devices? The truth is, if you look at our bodies like four or five years ago, yeah. we didn't have any connected devices. Yeah. We literally had your phone. Yeah. Today, the, the, the amount of wearable technology is just exploding. Yes, it's exciting to see that um, wearables is uh, the next phase in terms of how we engage just with the smartphone. Mm. Every one of us know that if you leave your smartphone at home it's almost like your life is a little bit uh, for that day or that particular point in time it's uh, it's disturbed. Mm. So mm. with wearables I think the most exciting thing is to show it, it, that we saw from the report is that it'll only increase. It doubled from last year Yes. Uh, the report indicated and uh, consumers believe that by 2020 we'll be wearing at least five of these at least five yeah. so when we talk about the internet of things i mean this is really a, a really good case to indicate that by 2021 we're going to definitely have those five devices billion. we'll be wearing even today when you look at some of the things that um, wearables could replace for instance uh, wearables we could see them replacing your smart your your your, your watches as yes. you're currently having um, blood and glucose detectors in the oh, medical absolutely. field where ingestibles for instance where you ingest uh, smart pills this is uh, research that we also conducted with experts with medical experts in terms mm. of where is this going and these are the expectations that are also coming uh, from 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 consumers in terms of how does then the current development of wearables evolve yes and it's going just beyond also health and fitness yes. it's also going into other into other areas such as security but um, this is a great example where do you see the role that Ericsson is playing on on the actual continent because you provide such interesting insights and research that people use the stats and are saying wow this is what we need to do to implement this is what we yeah. need to do to yeah. change so it's great thought leadership that you guys yeah. are, are you know assisting together in the, on this continent so we are essentially this year 140 years old as a company, Yes. but on the continent we've been here for 120 years. So it is, we during this period, I think we have developed really good insights in terms of how the consumer is evolving. So we like to start off from the consumer angle. What are the things that they like to see in technology? What are the things that they would like um, the technology, how do they, for instance, see this technology evolving? Mm, mm. So with that, we also then change in the way in which we produce, let's say, products. So for instance, we are not in the wearables business. However, we are an enabler uh -huh. of this, uh, these devices and we help also the operators uh, the mobile operators, for instance, to also think about the strategies of their of their of their own networks, yes. and how should they then dimension them for the future? What are the things that they need to look out for? Um, so, our 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 presence on the continent, I think, it's something that we're very proud of, and we continuously want to see technology. Um, evolving to suit and to address the needs of the of the people of this continent better. Oh, absolutely love yeah. it. Tumi Shamayu, thank you so much for joining us in the studio. Following African Innovation as I do, I came across this very interesting organization, the African Innovation Foundation, and they have done some really remarkable work around catalyzing and supporting innovation in Africa. I spoke to the founder about what they're doing. Let's take a look. Jean-Claude Bastis de Morea, you have a, a very interesting life history and a very successful career as a venture capitalist. And you've taken some of that money and plowed it back into African innovation in the form of the African Innovation Foundation. Just tell us a little bit about your thinking around AIF and, and why you want to do, set up this, uh, this remarkable business. Well, I'm um, basically, the fact that uh, I am from a field which is uh, an early stage market where you always go in, which is venture capital, I see the importance of innovation. Uh, if you innovate uh, um, out of sometimes the most stupid idea and coming out of need and you can create something for a segment, for a market, all of a sudden you are an entrepreneur. 
So the motivation behind that is unlock this potential which is dormant today and which was uh, which was uh, decentralized in in in, uh, in garages and and in hidden places because there is a lot of innovation in Africa. People underestimate that. And when I started, people kept saying you are crazy because uh, innovation is not uh, is not in, there is no innovation in Africa. So I've been able to prove them wrong because we've created a platform in uh, in uh, uh, with the prize for Africa uh, of the with the innovation prize for Africa where we have been able to pass a message uh, out to the innovators, for the innovators and for, for everybody else who may become an innovator and spreading that kind of uh, innovation spirit around so that we have been able to, to create a family, uh, a community, an innovation community, which is now um, in our database more than 6,000 innovators um, big and uh, um, they have now created platforms between themselves, seeded themselves, and uh, what we see is, is they um, talking to them, they've created uh, other platforms, which then also gonna create other platform, which is spreading uh, uh, all over Africa, the message that innovation exists in Africa, innovation can make the difference for Africa, because I believe that um, it's something which is very much needed to create uh, small and mid-sized companies by doing startups and this is then eventually uh, going to help to diversify the economy away from uh, 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 the only um, some of the resources where we are heavily dependent on. So Africa is very resource heavy, a lot of the wealth comes from under the ground and it's my theory that the gold is above the ground, we are the gold, mobile is the great enabler and it's these small businesses that are creating jobs which is what most young people want, they want a job, it gives them a sense of belonging and purpose. Yes, I, I, I agree completely with you, um, I think that if if uh, it depends on the type of uh, innovations what we have seen so far uh, the call out has been uh, um, had, the innovation had to have a, an originality which is very high and the marketability also so we've looked for innovations which can become a true player in the market with a new uh, product new service or a new idea um, and uh, most of the innovations which we have in our database um, will be um, in the market soon. You have uh, uh, very interesting products which are already in the market and through the price uh, for innovation you have, uh, we have given them access to uh, other um, potential investors which enable them to grow and to make a product more sophisticated and even uh, uh, grow their companies. Let's talk about one of your favorite pet projects, which is the, the soap factory in Angola, which is where your, your family is from. And it's a, it's a great way of, of creating a makerspace, an innovation hub. And there's already some remarkable stuff happening while the building is being converted. Uh, the, the soap factory, uh, which, the, which is the name of the project, is, is, uh, is built on five pillar and two layers. Pillar number one is a culture connector, where we want to um, uh, create and spur, uh, creativity through culture, that means through food, uh, through art, uh, through music, you name it, in order to um, be able to bring down the barriers and to connect uh, with uh, the makerspace, attract people to that space so that they come, make sure that it's a cool spot so that everybody wants to come there through culture and art. Um, that's the first pillar. The second pillar is a maker space um, where we want to um, show to the people that you can transform the materials which are uh, li laying around you, plastic, iron, uh, uh, pet, uh, um, um, aluminium, whatever, into uh, a product which has added value. Uh, and there we have workshops and, uh, and 3D printers, CNC machines, so we bring uh, modern tools to simple uh, uh, applicable uh, ideas. Um, and then there is the third layer which is a co-working space 
the co-working space is a, is a, is a time-sharing uh, uh, instrument where you can go and you have access to high-speed internet and you can share a desk with, uh, with, uh, with others. And then you have, um, you have an incubator and then you have uh, uh, an accelerator. And the, the, uh, the, um, um, the second, the, the, the layer, which is a kind of a transversal uh, layer, is that you have um, a, a community radio, and this community radio has the objective to, to make sure that it's uh, the ideas, the challenges, the, 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 the energy which is coming out of that is spread in the community, and that the community can come with questions and that a lot of exchange is happening. And then there is also a residence program, um, where people from uh, from outside, from other incubators, from other uh, other artists, other other co-working spaces can come and can uh, 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 share their knowledge and uh, and and be uh, a host and a guest of what's happening there. And my final question for you is: When do you find time to sleep? Well, I don't sleep a lot, <laughs> but uh, uh, but um, I think it's a. Uh, it's passion, so passion uh, uh, makes you work, or make, uh, make work not being work, but uh, make being a, a kind of a passion and a hobby, and that's what I'm doing, so I'm not sleeping a lot, and I'm doing, and creating. Well, keep up the good work, thanks you for interviewing. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to the iStore in Santon. We're at the headquarters of the Core Group, uh, who are, you know, the biggest uh, resellers of Apple products on the Southern African continent. Not the Southern African con continent, but in Southern Africa. And uh, we're joined by Linda van der Nest, who is the marketing director. Linda, nice to have you with us today. Okay. So, um, you guys are Apple distributors, right? Yes, you distribute correct. all of the Apple products and of course the iPhone, which is uh, an incredibly popular product and one of the biggest sellers in the country. Um, and you guys have been doing this for a while. How, how's, how's the Apple product doing in South Africa? Yeah, listen, we've been, uh, we've been doing this for years and years and years. And uh, as you know, Apple products are f extremely popular within the South African market. Yeah. No much more so than the iPhone. And obviously amazing products like iPad and even products like iPad Pro that have recently been announced. Mm. And we've just seen amazing interest um, in the South African market for these products. And of course, Mac, yes. um, which remains one of the, um, the stalwarts in the Apple portfolio. So now, Apple's quite an interesting brand because they they have this big party once a year and they announce, uh, which is normally in September, uh, it's like the best kept secret in the industry. So we know that there's going to be a new iPhone coming out. Right now we're sitting on iPhone 6, iPhone 6s, but there are quite a few other products. It's quite interesting that when Apple first came there was one Apple device. Now there's a selection of Apple devices, right? Which is the biggest seller in the country at the moment? Well, okay, I think at the end of the day, it's all about the Apple ecosystem. And, yeah. and that's why Apple have diversified their range of products, because it's all about immersing customers in a technology experience that caters to all parts of your life. Yeah. Be it something that you're wearing on your wrist, yeah. be it something that you have in your pockets, be it something that you have in your desktop. And, and it diversifies the range of products to just truly immerse you in that experience. And then obviously the services offering that goes with that, with amazing products like Apple Music and iTunes, of course. Um, with regards to popularity, of product, you know, it all depends at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I can't share exact sales no, figures enough. with you. But it, it, what, what I'm getting at is it's amazing how the phablet, which has appeared out of nowhere, you know, the biggest, the bigger iPhone 6 uh, device, has really done well. And I see a lot of people using it, which is great that there's a bigger device out in the market. Yeah, and listen, it's, it's interesting because I think, you know, certainly what we see is that the beauty about these Apple products is that they cater for every type of individual now. Yeah, yeah. And you have your bigger iPhone and the 6 Plus and the 6S Plus. But then we've also seen the smaller form factor make a massive comeback in iPhone SE. Yes. And the interest behind iPhone SE has been phenomenal. And I want to just take a, a step into the tablet world over here because this is the really, really big one and I mean, the regular, to give you an idea, this is a normal, uh, the normal iPad, you know, in the original form factor, that's more or less the size. But look how much bigger they are. That's well, the I'll iPad. Put the iPad mini in there the for mini, you as well. The mini, the middle one is the, uh, the regular iPad, and this is the, the, the big, the big mama. Yeah, uh, so who this who is, uses this? So this is the new iPad Pro 12 inch. 
Um, you're holding the iPad Pro 9.7 inch over yes. there, and then this is the iPad Mini. So the iPad Pro is obviously the, the, the latest model, and what makes the iPad Pro so amazing is that this now works with the Apple Pencil and with the Apple Smart yeah. Keyboard, and both the 12 inch and in that nine inch form factor. And that's really what's the key differentiator about this product, because it's no longer just a tablet, it actually becomes a completely different product with the Apple Pencil and the way in which Apple have designed the Apple Pencil to work. So one of the cool things about, about the Apple products is that, you know, there's the accessories. The accessories yes. are big, there's yes. the, the covers. But aside from that, it's the additional stuff like the health devices that I find interesting. Even things like, uh, you know, monitoring your temperature. You know, you've got like rain gauges and weather stations that you can put in your house. Now that for me is the interesting part of this business because no other manufacturer kind of has that kind of range of accessories and that must be big for you guys. Listen, it's, it's very big for us. Obviously, you know, Apple has the, the, the main product lines in yeah. iPhone, Mac, iPad, Apple Watch, etc. But then as iStore, we do bring in a whole range of what we call third-party accessories. So they're not manufactured by Apple, but they are fully compatible with Apple devices and they're built for these devices. Yeah. So as you were mentoring, um, you know, the Natatmo range, we have your rain gauges and your yeah. weather gauges, your welcome cameras at home. So the camera picks up, somebody walks into your house, immediately sends you a photograph of that person, identifies that person through face recognition technology and can tell you whether it's a known individual or an unknown individual. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got some of the amazing light bulbs in store that actually change color. Um, you can set mood. Some of them actually have lighting settings. They're great for using nurseries. Oh, those, those, those are so cool, by the way. Those <laughs> light bulbs, you put it in there, download the app, okay? And then you can control the colors and you can create your own like Listen, they, ambiance. They're phenomenal and absolutely, we see that as a massive, massive part of iStore's business. Mm. And the other reason we see that as a massive part is for our customers it always gives you something new in the yeah, store yeah. so every time you walk into an eye store irrespective of the range of Apple products that we know and love there's this whole range of other complementary products that helps you to get even more out of your Apple product like you're saying the connected home accessories mm. um, think about what you know what happened with Star Wars and the lovely yes, BB-8 yes, 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 toys yes, yes. so these things are also all available and obviously you know you can browse and play with them within the environment as well I think what's nice about this brand and what you guys do is that Technology can be quite intimidating yes. for people. So you've got your own little uh, academy over here, so if people aren't sure on what, how to use a tablet, um, or, or if they have problems with their devices, you've got your own service center. Yes, absolutely. Thing. absolutely. Do you find that people are intimidated by technology? A brand like Apple has made massive strides into just decluttering the technology space for people, and we certainly find with our customers that the intimidation factor has decreased phenomenally because it's so easy to use and that's what we're all about yeah, yeah. because we cater with classroom training one-on-one -on -one training and obviously the technical service and support and we find those are key pillars in our business yeah and um, so it's not so much that people are intimidated but we understand that there's going to be a customer that might just need that little bit of extra help that little bit of you know hand holding um, and it's critical as a brand that that we offer that in country Linda from the nest thank you so much for thank joining you, us Aki. she refuses to divulge the dates but I'll tell you now and I'm giving this to you as a certainty, not like Brexit, not like predicting who the next US president is going to be, but I can guarantee you now that the new iPhone 7 will be arriving before the end of this year. So this week I've got a very interesting device to review and, and you know, if you look at it as I'm holding it right now, um, and you look at it initially, it does look like an Apple MacBook, right? Well, in fact, this is an Asus ZenBook device. Um, and the reason why it's, uh, you can but be confused by it is because it's made of uh, solid aluminum. And this is a beautiful device. Asus is a Taiwanese manufacturer who've been making really premium devices for Windows machines for many, many years now. And this is their latest one. It's called the Asus ZenBook. I wonder where they come up with those names, like Zen, like Shuao, well, you know, you get to your Zen mood when you're working on this. But it's a really amazing machine. It's got a Core i7 processor inside it from Intel. Um, and th the initial thing that you really feel is the sense of this, how solid it feels, because it's made from a solid piece, a solid aluminium block. And then the interesting process that they use after is they use a diamond cutting tool to cut around the edges to make it smooth like this. And then once they've done that, they put all the technology inside it. So it's got a, you know, a backlit screen as you'd expect in this kind of model. And, and you notice that it took two seconds 
to start up once I switched it on. Um, and this is one of the unique features that they've got the software that uh, literally from shutting it down, not completely, but once you've closed the lid of this machine and you open it again, it takes two seconds to start up. It's a touchscreen device, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, highly spec'd, as I said, using the latest Intel Core i7 processor. Uh, it retails at 20,000 Rand. It's got all the other bells and whistles, plenty of connectivity on the side. It's got the USB port, it's got an SD card port, it's got HDMI, it's got, you know, it's got everything that you need in a machine. And if you're looking for an alternative sexy machine that, um, you know, is pricey, let's be honest, but it's really incredibly well built. And it weighs 1.4 kilograms and the battery life of the Asus ZenBook is at about six hours so check it out if you're in the market for a high-end notebook that's going to really impress people because these after all are about how good you look while you're working right well not really but it's the functionality but seriously a greatly well-built uh, notebook from asus 20,000 rand it's called the asus zenbook it doesn't have a solid state drive but it does have a one terabyte drive which is pretty massive and that's it for tonight's show. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of TechBusters. Good night. Keep that conversation coming in. We're at TechBusters SA and you can tweet us as well. He's at ChapShack. I'm at Daki Anastasio. And if you want to email us, we are at TechBusters SA and uh, TechBusters at abn360.com. Thanks for joining us tonight. Good night.